Hi, I'm happy. I always like to be happy in my clinical theater. I'm happy to talk about this topic though. It's about harmony and matching ceramics in the mouth. So it's about ceramic selection. It's about how we deal with the ceramics and also how we cement them. And don't let me leave out the prepping component because that makes a big difference on how we get ceramics to blend. See, I've been doing dentistry a long time and I still remember back in dental school, only option we had was a PFM and that's when we started the porcelain margin, right? I thought that was the ultimate aesthetic restoration and at the time it was, but my thinking about blending is different than it used to be because we're not masking out a coping to try to make things bland. Right now, sometimes we do need to mask out dark roots and we'll go through that on this video series. But now what we do is we take consideration of the preparation, the ceramic translucency, and there's other factors as well that we're gonna talk about on this video. In fact, this video also will be applied to our CE section, even though it's gonna be on our normal educational thread. So if you're gonna watch the series, you may wanna look over at the CE section so you can take that simple little quiz when you're done and get CE credit. That's what we're doing here on this site. So let's talk about Harmony Blend and how we make that work in our clinical theater. And I'll tell you, I've learned a lot by trial and error. Yes, through the years, I've taken off ceramics because the blend wasn't what we wanted. And I've done that from one tooth to a whole set of veneers. And I don't like doing that, particularly with lithium disilicate. It's a lot more difficult to get off even though I have a erbium laser now that I can loosen up that cement and pop those veneers off and re-cement them with another color of cement or modify them to make them blend. But we have to understand how ceramics work, the behavior of ceramics, the behavior of translucency, and the thickness of ceramics and the color of the prep. All those things impact what we do. So that's what this series is gonna be about. Get your seatbelt on and let's have some fun. Also, I wanna mention that I'm here with my sidekick and that's Jordan. He's my buddy, he's my German Shepherd, and he's with me 24 hours a day. And he doesn't care about ceramic selection as long as I'm happy. <laughs> That's why it counts. Now, when I'm looking for aesthetic blend, there's a concept that I go through in my brain. And I always start backwards on this. Number one is I want harmony. What do I mean by that? Both in the mouth and for the emotional closure for that patient, I wanna make sure we get harmony. So you need to understand your client and expectations. Now, that's a whole nother series, right? The emotional closure and connecting with your clients so you, you know you're gonna have a happy customer. That's what it's all about. We all want happy customers. Biofunctional, which is the mechanical process of the mouth, knowing where the client has been, what's their age factor, what's their wear and tear factor, and can we accomplish the aesthetic outcome they would like to have with the current functional environment of the mouth. And that's a whole nother topic in itself, but it's really, really important because function always comes first in everything I do. Another thing I look at closely is what I call dental gingival aesthetics, and that's the soft tissue, the soft tissue, connective tissue, the zenith profile, the health of the papillaries. Soft tissue is kind of like the second act in the aesthetics and when it works, it's great. And when it's not working, it creates visual tension and it just makes the case not look as good. The next factor for aesthetics that I really focus in on, and this is what I do a lot in my hands-on classes, is tooth physique. What is tooth physique? Well, it's the silhouette of the tooth, it's the shape, it's the contours, it's the primary, secondary, and tertiary anatomy, and a superficial gloss when we've completed the case to make it really blend in the mouth, and that's about the reflection and deflection of light and translucency of your ceramic. That's a lot of fun. That's really my craft. That's what I love doing. I always keep learning and never stops. But all this aesthetic harmony starts with ceramic selection. And sometimes that can be confusing because we have different brands. They all have their behavior. We have different translucencies. We have opaque ceramics. We had medium opaque ceramics, and then we have more high translucent ceramics. Which one do you use? How do you avoid the ceramics from going gray? 
right? I'm sure you've seen that of where if a ceramic goes gray, everything about it may be great, but that gray tooth, <laughs> it doesn't look vital and no one's happy, particularly if there's a dark root. So we have to think about those things and that has a factor on how you prepare. Whenever I prepare a case, I'm always going in with the thought of what do I want with this final result? Because preparation will dictate what you do, whether it's additive, so you're adding more to that smile surface if you're doing multiple teeth. It's almost like Invisalign or braces where you're increasing the curvature of the arch in that smile zone. Quite often that works. Other times it doesn't, so you have to prep differently. So I want a prototype plan before I start my case. So that's really, really important. So having said all these factors, the focus for this video series is how do we choose the right ceramic for that case? So you're gonna get that sizzle rush when you're done and you're optimizing your craft so the patient is satisfied with their expectations. And that's what this journey is all about. And that quest never ends for me. It just keeps happening as I move through this process. Right there, yeah. There you go, chin down, chin down, forward. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're, you're awesome, Justin. We love you. Do we love Justin? We love Justin. We, we love, we love, we love Justin. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaw's awesome. There you go. There we go. I mean, I like Justin behind you there. Wow, that's cool. So you see what I mean? The difference those teeth make. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. Yeah, take a look at this. Fun? Wow, this is cool. Oh, I like that one there. Yeah. See, that would be on, on the cover of a magazine right there. No way. Well, that is beautiful there. Yeah, that's neat. Wouldn't you say you're photogenic? <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below and also subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified when future videos are posted on this site. You can also glean a lot more online training at thecleminstitute.com. That's my online training with hundreds of videos. In fact, this video is a sample of what I produce with my online training in addition to my online form and questions and CE online. Would love to see you there as well. See you in the next video. You know, I'm saying this as a professional oh, I know. because I'm working on you. I know. I know. <laughs> but that's a lifetime. Excited. It's a lifetime. Good. Move your head this way, Good. just like that. Oh, uh, that is, that is sweet. Yeah, we are. I'm gonna come into the subject. Yeah, here you go. There you go. Okay. All right. So I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you.